Hey guys, what's up? All right, let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen what happens to rubber when it sits out in the sun or is exposed to a lot of heat over a period of time? Of course you have. It gets all dried out, it starts to crack, and uh, it's just not good. An RV, whether it's a motorhome or uh, a pull behind or a fifth wheel, it just doesn't matter. We got rubber, exposed rubber everywhere, not only on the outside, but underneath the coach. And so today, I'm going to show you how we take care of that. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. Okay, so for today, the tools we're going to need is this Thedford Premium RV Slide Out Rubber Seal Conditioner. And this has a uh, UV inhibitor. I just love this stuff. You've seen me use this stuff before when I did the video when we uh, cleaned and serviced our roof vents. Remember that? I mean, this stuff here, as you can see, it's a real creamy kind of a material. Can you see that? And it's a conditioner, okay? And it makes, it makes rubber nice and soft, and it inhibits the damage that UV rays uh, can do to rubber. So that's the first thing we're going to need. Then we're gonna need a nice clean towel. We're going to need nitrile, uh, disposable gloves and of course my trusty telescopic pole that you've seen me used in a ton of videos I just love this thing but you know that an old sock and of course whenever I do work on the on the coach I always wear my arm protectors for those of you who have never seen these before it keeps me from banging my arms and scratching them and I got my work shirt on and so on and lastly my ladder all right so let's get to work and I'm going to show you first how to take care of the seals around the slide. And I'm going to start this demonstration on our smaller bedroom slide. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put on our disposable nitro gloves. And if any of you are interested, you can make an appointment online for those of you who need your annual exam. We can take care of that too. As you know, we have these side ones that go up here, around the top of the topper, down the other side, and underneath here, okay? But this is just one part. We also have this bead here that goes all the way around this part of the slide, and it goes all the way up through the top and down the other side in the bottom. Now, those of you who do not have toppers on your slides, it would be very easy for you to get on top of the roof and take some of that conditioner and spray it on your uh, seals and then just kind of work it in with your hands and just wipe off the excess with a rag. But those of you like us who have a topper, that poses another little challenge. And I'm gonna show you how to deal with that. So let's go ahead and deal with the side and the bottom first. So what I'm gonna do is just give this a quick little shake and you just take it and you spray it right in there like that. You see how that foams up? And then you take your hand and you just kind of work it in there. It's real slippery, it's kind of like a I don't want to say a lotion because it's not really like a lotion, but it's a foaming kind of a lotion. I don't know else how to say it, but it really kind of, it, it really makes that rubber nice and soft. And then you just take a nice clean rag and wipe off the excess. Now you can see there's still a little bit on there. I let that soak in to the rubber. Okay. Now let's go to the bottom. It's the same thing here. You just take it and shoot it in here. Take your glove, take it, work it in there, take a clean rag, put it up in there, 
and clean it. And that's all there is to that. You do the same thing up the other side. And then I'm going to show you the top in, in a second. But while I still have the ladder right here, you can see this bead right here. Okay? Same exact thing. You come up here and just spray it, rub it, and wipe it. Now one thing I want to point out here is that these corners right here, on the front leading corner and the back corner, those are the ones that get that morning and hot afternoon sun. So what you can do here is by hand, reach in and get that first foot or so in there, right? As far as you can reach in there. Rub it with your hand, wipe it off with a clean rag. What about the uh, bead and this part back in here where you can't reach in with your hand? That's where the pole and the sock comes in. Where I'm going to show you how I do the top of the slide seals. When you have a topper and you can't get your hand down in there nor have access from the roof, make sure you stick around because we're not going to do just slide seals. I've got some other little things here about this rubber conditioner that's going to surprise you and you probably haven't heard of. So we're going to take this sock and we're going to double it up and kind of bring it around. Take a rubber band where I got a nice little ball of sock there. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to saturate this and I'm going to go into the slide seal and lubricate it with this sock. Now, Joni, obviously, since she's filming this, she's not going to be able to see me do that up there. So I'm going to take the camera up there with me and set it up on top of the slide. And hopefully you'll be able to get a good view of what I'm doing. So let's get going. OK, so what I did is I reconfigured the uh, sock a little bit to where it'll get down inside that groove there. I want to go all the way to the back as much as possible into that seal right back up in here and i i come in about a foot or so and i just you see how it pushes into that seal and i just go all the way down like that so i'm going to go ahead and saturate it again and allow that sock to kind of wedge up inside that seal so look at that you just kind of push the head of that pole with that saturated sock and then just keep pulling it and pushing it. I don't worry about coming. I try to get the rod to about here and then that way I'll turn the camera here. The last 18 inches or so I'll just I'll just spray it by hand. Okay. And I'll get that back in that little ridge in there because it's a lot easier to do here on the ends with your hand. Then take a rag and wipe off. And then, then what I'll do is I'll go to the other side where I can get good leverage and I'll do the other end over there on that seal. And that thing gets that nice and clean and conditioned. So there we are. We've done that all the way around on the inside in here. And then we moved and we did this outside bead right here, both on the top. So the bedroom slide is done. And I'll do the same exact process with the large slide on the other side. And just look at the, look at the crud that we got out of that seal. Look at that on that sock. So <laughs> we not only got all that dirt and pollen and all that nonsense out of there, but we conditioned it too. Now, when we were doing the outside slide seals, remember that little bead? So when you bring your slide in, it seals around the outside of the coach, right? Well, when you bring that slide in, remember, there's another bead right here. I can feel it right here there's a rubber seal all the way around here. Don't forget to do that part. I'm not going to demonstrate by pulling in the slide and showing you that, but the next time you arrive somewhere or you're at a place 
where the slides are in. Get your can, put it on a rag, and go around, because that, that seal is all along here, all along the top, and along the back side. So before you deploy your slides, while they're still in, put some of that stuff on a clean rag and put that all the way around and you'll be good to go. Okay, so the bedroom slide is done. Depending on the amount of sun and how clean you keep this, I mean, you could do this once a year. All right, two, two times a year, yeah, that could be a little overkill. But, you know, I'm always out here piddling around and I'll get up there twice a year and I'll clean the top of my slides with the mop that I showed you in that other video. And while I'm up there, I go ahead and do the seals too. So now let's take it to the next level of other rubber parts that I take care of. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is all the rubber seals in our bay doors, okay? We happen to be right here uh, at our generator door. It's exactly the same process, okay? So you just come up here and you spray all the way around it and down. This just doesn't have to be pretty, right? This is not something that has to be done delicately, no taping off, nothing like that. You just spray it in there, take your clean rag and wipe it off. And as you can see, there's still some down in here but I just let that soak in, okay? It'll take about 30 minutes and that'll all get inside there and it'll soak in and it keeps this rubber really nice and soft. So when you close your bay doors, they seal good. And even though they are not exposed to direct sun, just the heat and the over, you know, just the length of time, how rubber will break down, this keeps those things nice and soft and you're not you're just not going to have to worry about these things how many of you ever thought about the rubber seal around your door okay i mean the slide seals yeah probably everybody knows about that uh, a lot of people don't know how to get inside those slide seals uh, if you have a topper on it but you know there are people that have done videos on that before but what about doors it's exactly the same thing, right? You just spray it on and come up. Now, with me, I'm pretty tall. And I can get that without a ladder. For you short people, you're gonna need a ladder. <laughs> this whole entire job doing the slides the bay doors and this door is probably maybe 15 minutes, okay? But now I'm gonna show you something that I'll bet you most of you haven't seen. So let's go up underneath the coach and I'll show you there. Okay, so here we are underneath the coach and we're underneath the engine bay, okay? So here we have the power steering unit. We have radiator hoses here these hoses right here are the engine oil cooler this goes right up to the uh the pack back here where your oil filter is and one little quick tip here to you guys who have these ford f53 chassis these hoses when they come stock from the factory they literally lay right on this cross member of the chassis the hose is laying right on the metal and when I uh, saw that, I'm like, okay, this is definitely a place of failure. So what I did is I took some split loom, you see that? And I cut it to length about that long and I ran it all the way, I put it around this hose and all the way to the other end over here to the oil filter so that these hoses are not laying on this cross member. All right, so that gives that some added protection. But what I wanted to show you with this lube as you know, heat really dries out rubber quite easily. So I spray all my hoses. I come way up here on these radiator hoses and down here and down here. And I take my hand and I just massage and lubricate and condition 
all these hoses. Now normally what I would do, I'm not going to do it in this video, but normally I would slide these slide looms back and I would condition back in there and then I do the same thing from the other side back there. But I'm just trying to show you how putting on this uh, conditioner on your hoses will keep them from drying out. And this is a really good thing to do. And you continue everywhere where you see a rubber hose up in here, you put this conditioner on. So now we're standing in front of the coach. Let's go inside the hood here. So inside the hood, we also have more hoses. Okay, same thing. We're going to spray all these hoses and we're going to work that conditioner. This really ke keeps them nice and soft all in through here. Everywhere you see a hose, a, a rubber hose of any kind, just spray a little bit on the hose or on your hand, it doesn't matter, and work that into the hose. So you can see right here, we have the uh, water reservoir for the radiator. And you see right here where it has this clamp on this hose that takes the fluid to the uh, radiator. This is one of those areas that can really get dried out and is a failure point. And so whenever I can, if I can reach up in there, wherever there's a hose and I see this kind of a clamp, I spray that stuff really rich on there and I just kind of saturate it and I let it sit there. I don't rub it in. I don't do anything. I just let it saturate into the rubber and there you go. Just go through the whole entire front of the coach and underneath the coach and do this to all the hoses that you can that you can reach. So getting those hoses and stuff up underneath the engine compartment, you can gain access from the top, like I said, through the hood, up underneath laying on cardboard like I always do, whatever way you want. And you can also gain access from through the uh, passenger and the driver's side uh, wheel well. Just make sure that you practice safety precautions like you would in anything else. As far as a maintenance schedule, I do this at least once a year. Sometimes I do it twice. It just depends on if I'm up there doing some other work. I may go ahead and just go ahead and do that also anyway. A couple of little tips I'd like to end with here is the reason I use and love this pole is because it extends so far out that when I get to my large slide, I can come in from one side and go halfway in and then go around the other side and get the other half that way. When you're on the bedroom slide, which is a much smaller slide, I only need to extend it maybe one or two notches. So that's why I really like this pole. It's so easy to extend and I can go long distances or short distances. Another area that I did not show you here in this video, but I wanted to make you aware of it. If you'll go to where your generator is and look up underneath there, you'll see the metal fuel line coming from the fuel tank to the generator. But there's an area about, I don't know, it depends on your coach. On ours, it's about 18, 20 inches long of a piece of rubber that comes off of the metal line to the fuel filter, then to the fuel pump. You want to make sure that you keep that uh, rubber line nice and conditioned too. Those of you who have DPs that have airbags or, e or any RV that has any kind of airbags, they're kind of tucked up underneath the chassis out of the way, out of sight, out of mind, right? They're a real uh, easy thing to forget. And those things will dry out and crack over time. This is another great area to keep those uh, bags nice and lubed and conditioned and soft so they do not crack. It doesn't even have to be an RV. It could be your tow vehicle. If you've got a big tricked out truck that you're dragging a big old fifth wheel on or something like that, you may have installed airbags underneath there too. Don't forget to condition those airbags too. It'll make them last a long time. Oh, and don't forget to go into the propane bay, whether you have five gallon uh, propane tanks or a larger one in a coach uh, bay, you're going to have rubber hoses in there too. Make sure you condition those hoses also. And I know some of you are going to ask me this if I don't answer this question. Martin, 
Do you use this on your tires? No. <laughs> I do not use that on my tires. I use 303. I've uh, showed you guys that many times in other videos. But for everything that we've used here, and I'll also include the 303 that I put on the tires in the links below. Um, all you have to do is look for the show more under this video. Click that scroll down. It'll be right there. For those of you who have a tablet or a phone, you probably have a little arrow to the right, right under the video. Click that, scroll down, the links will be there. And again, you know, Joni and I want to thank you so, so much for using our links. It really supports our channel and uh, it encourages us to keep on going. Uh, it, it takes a lot to do these things and by you guys just, if you're going to buy it anyway and you use our links, we're like, yes, thank you guys. Thank you so much. If you're new to our channel and not used to how it works, if you go to our main YouTube channel page and click playlists, then on that page, click RV Motorhome Upgrades, Maintenance, and DIY How-Tos. There's already a wealth of information there. Just scroll on down there. Lots of stuff there to learn and, and watch and see how I do stuff. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. It's free. These videos do not cost any money to subscribe. Just hit subscribe, ring the bell off to the right so you'll be notified the next time I upload my next free video. So if you like this, guys, give me a like button. Come on and give me some comments. I would love to hear that because that's pretty much it for now on how I take care of rubber on our motorhome and underneath the engine bay. So until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around. <music>